Okay, I think we had better uh, make a start. Uh, there's no doubt you're aware we've got a, a full council uh, this afternoon starting at four o'clock. Uh, so with your agreement, uh, I would like to try and maybe keep questions uh, to a minimum, if that's possible. Uh, uh, and uh, I would respectfully ask that if we've got any questions of a kind of technical manner, if they can move be brought with the uh, officers, uh, you know, privately, that would that would maybe save a wee bit of time. Uh, Stuart, do you think we would have to maybe stop the meeting about 10 to 4 to, to have time to come out and go back in for the full council? You can be, I'm sure my colleagues in committee services would be delighted with 10 to 4, but if it means the difference between closing the meeting and not, I would maybe say 5 to 4. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Okay, okay, we'll move on. So, if we get any apologies, substitutions, and declarations of interest, I've seen Graham's got a declaration in for item number three. Any other? Just the same here, Michael. Okay. Convener, we have apologies submitted by Councillor McKenzie um, to be substituted by Councillor Quinn, and apologies submitted by C. McElhaney to be substituted by J. McElhaney. Okay. Are there any other declarations of interest apart from Councillor Brooks? Yeah, I think you can be the same as Councillor Brooks and Quarty and the Fertilizer Board member. Okay. Well, uh, member, well. uh, sorry, just a declaration. I'm a member of uh, the Bogostone Community Association for 6.4.5. Okay, Chris, thanks for that. Okay. It's nice to see Lynn and uh, maybe not so much nice to see Jim, but, uh, but anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> it's good that you're both here. Okay, so. Just, just sorry, we, Michael, just a McLeod leisure for myself as well. Right, okay, Alan, thanks. Okay, so we know the new format of the, the agenda, so it's the expedited business and relevant updates. So if we can maybe start, if, if it's okay, we'll maybe break into the. The relevant kind of subsections and maybe have questions answered after each one, if that's okay with everybody. So the first one is the revenue and capital. Uh, Mary, do you want to maybe go through that with us, please? Yes, thanks, convener. Um, section five of the report advises committee of the revenue and capital position at period eleven. The latest projection in terms of the revenue budget is an underspend of four eight seven thousand. 487,000. In addition, the committee is projecting net COVID costs of £2.946 million. The major variance is explained in paragraph 511, and this position is also laid out in Appendix 1 and the Earmark Reserve Statement Appendix 2. In terms of the capital budget, the current projection is on budget. The committee is reporting net advancement of £1.317 million. And that's mainly resulting from advancement in the VRP, the vehicle replacement program, as well as a number of other movements that are outlined in paragraph 5.1.3. Progress in the major pro projects is detailed in section six. Committee is asked to note the position outlined to approve the allocation of 400,000 from the Town and Village Centres funds to progress the demolition of the former Babylon nightclub and to note the approval of funding to cross Hill Children's Home and Guruk Primary Extension projects from the COVID pressures funding. Uh, myself and the lead officers will be happy to take any questions in this section of the report. Okay, Mary, thanks very much. Okay, any questions for Mary? No? Hey, sorry, Stephen. Yeah, I, I mean, I, don't, I know this is going to be subject to discussion later on at 6.3 in terms of Babylon, but in terms of this particular recommendation around the 400,000, can, can we identify where the where the 400,000 is coming from in terms of the, 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 the attached appendix on the capital programme? Can we identify the... The, the general provision that's in there that's going to cover that. Mary, do you want to tell us, Stuart? Um, yes. Ed, I don't know if you want to help me. It's, it's coming from the Town and Village Centres Fund. Um, sorry, I'll just get to my appendices. Um, 
think if you look at page 15, it's the Town and Village Centre's core regeneration budget lines. There's a number of them and it's coming from within them. As far as I'm aware, Stuart, you might be able to add to that. Yeah, you can be here, that's correct. Right, so, 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 so just to look at all of those lines, there's obviously it's not coming from Port Glasgow, there's Burgurok, there's a West Blackall Street, Greenock Town Centre Connections, Lyle Fountain, Jamaica Street Car Park, another. So I'm presuming it's coming from somewhere within the other line. Yeah. yeah. Right, so there's, there's more than 400,000 basically unallocated within that. That line. Was that the case? Yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks. Okay, Stuart. Okay. Uh, any other member? No. Can we move on to the second item, which is roads? Gail? Thank you, Thank Convener. You. Um, members will note the progress. This progress takes us to the end of the financial year. There are a number of carriageways that were not able to be progressed last financial year due to the pandemic. These have been added to the programme for this financial year and will be delivered during the, um, particularly during the summer period. Um, in relation to the William Street lights, um, these works have been awarded. They were due to commence in April. However, it's anticipated that it will be the end of May, early June due to some final sign-off requirements for Transport Scotland, and they'll be in sight for 12 weeks. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay. Stephen, you want to come on? Yeah, just gen generally on the issue of, of roads uh, in particular, there's, there's been a wee bit of adverse coverage in the local paper recently and some letters uh, flying in the, the, the paper about the, the general state of the roads and some of that criticism is is about the trunk roads and uh, I suppose my question would be what sort of uh, what dialogue type of dialogue do we have or influence do we have with uh, Transport Scotland uh, around the trunk roads but more generally it would be useful if we could get an update before I mean we're obviously going to be moving back soon to sort of normal business meetings rather than the expedited business I mean, it'd be useful if we could get a a report on where we are in terms of the general condition of our roads and and how we compare to other councils and 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 the sort of progress we've made through the the the, the roads investment strategy and the sort of I suppose the the direction of travel that we're on. I think it would be useful just to get that over overview report because while there's there's been a fair amount of damage uh, in the, the the past year or so, and the the, the investment program has been affected by 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 COVID, and obviously we've been affected by poor weather. I I don't believe that the roads are as bad as they're, they're made made out to be by, by some people. So it would be useful to get just that that overall uh, perspective in terms of how how we are doing. Uh, in terms of the national sort of benchmarks and how we compare to others. Okay, Gail. Yes, yeah. um, I'm happy to come back, convener, on our report and um, because actually we have seen that we have progressed up the table and are faring well compared to other local authorities because of the investment. During the um, COVID period, we were only doing emergency and urgent defect repair. We have been doing some additional defect repair to catch up on that. And as with all our works, we align our work compared to the well-maintained code of practice to ensure that we're classifying defects and repairing them within the timelines that are allocated to that. In relation to Transport Scotland, we have a regular liaison meeting and we'll ensure that any concerns that are raised are raised at that meeting with our partners. I mean, just there is a specific concern, obviously, uh, at the sort of junction at the police station, um, and I know we're looking at the sort of moving the lights and things like. That, but there's a particular concern. That's a, a busy, busy junction, and the the state of the carriageway at that point is is very, very poor. Yeah. Okay, Chris. Chris Conley. Uh, thanks, convener. Uh, just a couple of uh, quick queries. 
On 6.1.7, I know the obviously working through the battery park and to provide a cycle lane. I'm just wondering whether or not if we could possible officers bring it to do another member's briefing because I'm, I'm aware that things have been progressing in the background. I think it'd be worthwhile getting uh, an update uh, so we know exactly how, where things are going with respect to active travel and safer working streets. And on a just a wee sort of note, not so much personal note, but as a, a ward member's note, I noticed that there's been a uh, a fair bit of work done in Port Glasgow on the top of the top of the port around Marlock Avenue, which I think has been a good improvement to go from the school. So thank you for that. Uh, on six point one point eight, I just really can you give an update on when you expect to start works to start on on the William Street uh, crossing. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Yes, we're happy to do a members' briefing session um, on the active travel and our proposals. What we've done in the previous year, but what we've also got planned um, as we move forward. In relation to William Street Lights, they're due to commence on site at the end of May, early June. Um, as I was uh, noting in my introduction, there are some outstanding issues still with Transport Scotland, but we believe we've got um, most now closed off and it will be on site for 12 weeks. Okay, thanks, Gail. Jim. Thanks, Gavia. Pick up again on the, the, the trunk roads. If a constituent, I remember the public reports uh, a pothole, for example, um, through the app, for example, um, and it comes out as on the A8, um, what's the feedback or the, the follow up for A, the council, and going back to that constituent? Um, does, does, does the council take that up the trans, uh, Transport Scotland, or do they just say, no, your job, pal, you need to go and report somewhere else? So the, the message back to the constituency, if it's not us, here's a, here's a phone number for you to phone. I just wanted to find out what the joined up thinking process is. Yeah, would you want to Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Convener. Um, we will note the defect and report it to our partners in Transport Scotland, but we also advise the resident that it is a Transport Scotland defect. So if there's further defects in that location that they know the direct point of contact. Okay. Anyone else on roads? No? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Aiken 3 is environmental issues. Uh, Gail, you take this as well? Yes, Convener, we don't have really anything to add to this at the moment. We um, All our projects are progressing. It's early in the financial year, so um, we're in the planning and programming stage. Um, but in relation to the cremator replacement, um, we actually had a meeting on that earlier on this morning, and we are awaiting final feedback from our colleagues and our external colleagues in legal prior to the tender document being issued. Thanks, Gail. Did you want to come in there? Yeah. Stephen. Yeah, I, was just, I was just going to ask on the play areas. Um, probably I'm pleased to see that the, the accessible play equipment has been in, installed and, and certainly seen the, the equipment up in uh, West Glen Park. Like, looks, looks very good. But there, there is obviously some more money within the, the general allocation for for play areas, and it would be useful to know when sort of proposals might be brought forward for that. I know if the SNP wins the election, we're going to get our share of £60 million to refurbish all our play areas. I'm not so sure what that what that will actually mean in practice, but given we have allocated some extra funding for for play areas, it would be useful to, to know when uh, we'll likely get proposals brought forward and the, the utilisation of that. I would ignore the political the political point there, Gail, uh, with an election coming up uh, tomorrow. But if you want to ask the the broadcast on behalf of the SNP this <laughs> season. Uh, it's, it's just fantasy, but <laughs> okay. Um thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Convener. Yes, the team are currently carrying out inspections of our playgrounds to advise and prioritise where the locations are that we're going to either develop the play area or look to um, install new equipment and we'll be happy to bring back a briefing that sets out those locations. Just, just to follow, follow that up, Convener, the, the, the Council in December 
agreed that a, an allocation of funding could be set aside from the Bitmar Trust Fund uh, to, to look at improve, general improvements in Burtmire Park in Kilmacoma. And I know that there's been some uh, requests through, via the Community Council for improved play facilities, so it would be useful to know for progressing that particular um, request. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Convener. Yes, we are progressing that. The team are aware of that location. I suppose at this point, I should really, I should really mention Craig End Resource Centre as well, Craig, since uh, Stephen got, got his band there. But anyway, Chris Connolly, would you join to come in? Uh, thank you, uh, Michael. I just just on the uh, cremator, also a related subject is the Wi-Fi. We not we can get a wee update about how that's progressing. Yes, thank you, Convener, that and Councillor. That's out for tender now. Okay, thank you. Sure, did you want to come in? Yeah, just, just when would we be expecting the works to start on site then? I'll be able to advise once the tender period is complete and we know if we have a successful contractor. Thanks, Neil. Stuart, did you want to come in? Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, I, I, for Councillor Flockerty's benefit, if you're getting your bid in for Craig End, I felt it was appropriate to add to the chat about Lunderson Bay. Uh, and as part of the tender exercise that we're carrying out in respect of the cremators, or sorry, the crematorium, uh, Wi-Fi streaming, um, clearly one of the considerations is the time scales that the contractor will take to implement. Uh, one of the contractors has indicated that the materials are of their solution would not require uh, a listed building uh, application being made, and therefore it's something that could be delivered very quickly. Okay, that's good news, Stuart. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions on environmental issues? No? Okay, item four is the Babylon a nightclub site and the Whale Fountain. Eddie, do you want to come in on this? Yeah, thanks, convener. Um, basically, the first item there on 631 is, is given an appreciation of um, the Babylon building demolition and how potentially um, tricky it is. Very little information supplied with the building um, when it was purchased. Um, the condition of it makes inspection um, very difficult, in fact, impossible in terms of asbestos. Uh, and there's also kind of legal issues in terms of adjacent building ownerships that we need to consider um, in any demolition contract. So, as Mary kind of covered earlier, the request is to allocate four hundred thousand um, pounds for for the demolition, uh, and we're progressing it um, as best we can at the moment with all these. Um, associated complications, including there's a road closure required as well um, for, for a period of time during the works. Um, Lyle Fountain, you'll, you have, if you've passed by recently, you'll have noticed that it is virtually now all off-site. Um, the actual main columns were originally planned to go off-site as well, but following the kind of more detailed inspection, um, it's been decided it's better to leave them in, in, in situ. Um, and those columns will be, will be um, refurbished in situ, but the all of the other um, parts of the fountain are now off site and in the, the contractor's workshop. Happy to take any questions. Thanks, Eddie. Graham, did you want to come in there? Thanks very much, Kinvina. Yeah, just the context of the, uns the, the fence and the groundwork we're doing at the Babylon site, once we eventually get it down and find the money to do that. Um, what's a fence? Will we create a, a den for um, criminal behaviour? Some people call it antisocial. I'll call it criminal behaviour to ensure that we actually, because we've got a number of problems in that area, and I don't want to uh, encourage um, additional issues. So, kind of reassurance, the fence would be appropriate. Um, through you, convener. I mean, the detail of the fence hasn't to be has, hasn't been agreed yet, and we'll have that discussion with planning colleagues as well. I mean, the plan is to leave it effectively um, level and soiled and seeded until such time, obviously, as as a as future use of the site is is determined. But the, so the detail of the fence can be agreed, um, you know, subject to co consultation with planning. Thanks very much. Um, I'm sure planning has had my concern. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Chris? Uh, nice to be It's just on the issue of the 400k, obviously. I uh, don't know what exactly the point to bring, it, bring this up in, so please apologise because it's not the right one. Uh, what I was just wondering is, will that come back to committee uh, for what do you call it, for approval if it's if it's more or if it's less than the four hundred k, 
but we get oversight of that before it goes out before the tenders agreed effectively. Uh huh. Um, okay, then. So you, so you, yeah, you know, I hope I, I think I can answer this. I mean, as as it's under the five hundred thousand um, threshold, there's, there's no need to um, obtain committee approval if if it is within that budget. Uh, we're, alloc we're obtaining permission to allocate that budget to it, and um, so it wouldn't come back to committee if it comes back from tender within that allocation. If it obviously comes back over that allocation, then we'll need to come back to committee. Yeah. Okay, Jim. Yeah. Thanks, convener. Just just on the, the Babylon and the Lyle Fountain. Firstly, in, in Babylon, I mean, for us to have to pay 400000 for demolition does stick in probably every uh, councillor's throat. But let, we've got to be clear on this. This is the result of private sector failure. You know, it'd be much better if the private sector could have either have done this up or made their arrangements with housing associations or any housing to get this done themselves. It's just the very fact for the last 11 years, it's been lying a blight in the landscape of the centre of the Greenock that we as a council has, has got to step in here. It's, it's certainly something that, uh, as a council, you, you'd prefer not to need to do. You'd prefer someone to take over and to make it a go going concern or for a housing association to come in. But obviously, as we've seen, given the cost of purchase and given the cost of demolition, it just wasn't viable. So we're left with a choice of do we let the building just fester there? And as the growing season comes on, we'll see the, the plants come out the top of the roof again and we'll see the comments the Telegraph and the Facebook and all that. At least hopefully after today, if we agree the recommendation, it will be in the council's hands and we can bring it get it down as, as quickly as we can. Um, but let, let's not kid ourselves, it's it's something that we as a council or I certainly would have preferred that we didn't need to do. Um, but just the fact that uh, private sector failure has meant that we've had to step in and spend public sector funds in this. But I hope people agree with the recommendation. The only thing I was going to say is on the Lyle Fountain as well. If anybody looked at the Fountain when the people were taking it down, um, I think we've got it just in time before it actually fell down round about us. It looked um, in a terrible condition, I've, I've got to, to say it. So we've, we had a choice of, again, either stepping up and redoing uh, the prime centre of of, our, our, of Greenock or else letting it go to the right and ruin. So I think in the Lyle Fountain, we've just got it in time and hopefully we'll be able to see plans on what is going to happen and how it's going to look uh, eventually when they, when they put it up again. So it's just them two comments, convener. Thanks. Okay, Jim, thank you. Uh, okay, any other questions on that? No? Okay, we've got uh, two property sections, one in the public and one later on in private. So the first one, Eddie, do you want to take us through that? Yeah, thanks, Kimbina. I mean, I won't go through absolutely every project here, but I'll maybe just touch on the ones uh, where there's been progress or, or, or significant issues. Um, so on the kind of Clyde Square elevation re-roofing, um, Hopefully, if you've been passed, you'll see now that the kind of tented structures were on the top of the scaffold, um, following a little bit of a delay um, on the contractor's side. That will now let them get on with actually stripping the roof off and, um, and making some good progress uh, without the weather impacting them. Um, skipping on, King George building, uh, the first phase is now complete. And there's a note there on the, the second phase, which will be reported through the Education and Communities Committee. Um, following the kind of successful bid to RCGF in terms of the funding, and that design work, initial the initial design work on that um, phase is, is commenced. Um, waterfront life cycle complex, um, sorry, leisure complex life cycle works. Uh, we are now looking to progress that work, and um, with the complication obviously that Inverclyde Leisure are now back up and running, so we're having to liaise with, with them in, uh, in in terms of the program and, and some um, evening and weekend. Or mostly evening works to kind of um, get that progressed. Um, Cala House is, is getting close to complete now. Uh, obviously, with the nature of the operation of that building, the contractor has um, only been sending the, the minimum number of operatives to, to the site to progress the, to the outstanding works, but we're almost there. Sea walls and retaining walls, we've actually commissioned um, a couple of surveys now, and we're starting that, that work in earnest, um, taking advantage of some of the low spring tides or on the way. Um, 
Custom House Square, the first phase of the Global Road replacement is it was back yesterday and now um, we will be open today. Um, and the ground services accommodation, there's a, a note there um, on the addition of a further um, a garage building that requires replacement and similar treatment for the other three that have been noted um, previously. And that's um, within the Park Lee facility. Um, it's a very similar um, scope and requirement for that for that structure. On the minor works, there's, there's various um, projects that are either complete or attend a return stage. Um, the Custom House Square Bollards, they were hoped to be started late April. We're now looking at starting that early next week. Um, moving through the next kind of one that would kind of require a little note is the Craig Mushet Recycling Facility. So there's a bit of text in there around the current estimated cost of the project, which is obviously in excess of the kind of available budget. The reasons for that are kind of noted within the report. That is the abnormal cost associated with the site in connection with the, the drainage, the difficulties in actually taking any drainage off the site, and um, some localised treatment of the kind of quarry face in the area, um, and, and other kind of issues as well that are all contributing to that project being quite um, expensive potentially. And the, uh, the intention is to bring a further report back to committee uh, on this. COVID pressures allowance, and uh, Mary's already touched on that. Um, noting the use of emergency powers to take forward the completion works projects for the Cross Hill Children's Home project and the uh, Group Primary School Extension completion works project. And there's also a note in there about a use of um, an element of the COVID contingency to agree that it's a uh, final account for the St Mary's Primary School project as well. Um, do we stop at City Deal or do we carry on at City Deal? I just want to ask a question about the project that's not covered by the, by the major projects, that's the shipbuilder statue in Port Glasgow. Can you have an update on that? When, when do you think that's going to be going on sale? Sorry, Chris, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat that? Sorry, Chris, I couldn't hear you. 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 Through you, convener. Um, we are in discussions with our colleagues in legal about a matter in respect of what the uh, sculpture or sculptor does. Um, and until we get that resolved, we will not have an erection date for you. But as soon as we have that resolved, we will uh, be back to you with an update. Okay, sure. Thank you. John? Thank you, convener. Um, it's just on 6.4.16 Craig Mushet Quarry. Now, I understand that there's a leachate pipe ran from the quarry into Gurok Bay. Uh, will, will there be maps and diagrams showing the true location of that pipe? And could that be tapped into for the d drainage system? Yeah, for you, convener. Um, yes, we have got information on the location of that pipe. And it's that pipe that's proposed to take the drainage, and that's been approved um, by Scottish Water. But we do not have an answer from SEPA as yet. So uh, the kind of cost of the facility has been um, estimated based on the SEPA accepting that proposal. If, if they don't accept that proposal, then obviously there's a, a bigger problem in terms of the scheme. So we're still yet to hear from SEPA, but Scottish Water, we're happy with that proposal. That's lovely. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, John. Uh, Michael, okay. it's, Michael, yes. Michael, it's, it's Ronnie. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't get into the chat function. I don't know. That's what's okay. okay. Um, just a very quick one for Eddie again, and it's on Craig Mercer Recycling Facility. Uh, Eddie, I see that uh, in in the narrative there it says uh, there's a requirement to address a local stabilisation of the existing quarry face. Would that not have been included in the kind of original quote? Or you know, or the original assessment of cost. You know, you know, given that that basically, uh, certainly, I I used it a, a lot of the time, and it was it was pretty clear that you know, the 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 quarry face was 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 pretty near where where you were, you were putting your goods. So I just wondered why that did not 
you know, was not considered earlier? Um, through you, convener. I mean, my understanding is that the scope of the project has been developed uh, over time. Um, the kind of specialist surveys that we need to get for for that included looking at the rock face, and obviously it's not an area that, that we know uh, enough about, so we have to get a specialist to look at it. The advice from that specialist was um, that to address any risk of falling boulders uh, in the in the vicinity of where the you know the recycling area would be, then there needs to be a kind of localised netting solution for that. And you know, and the technical services section also looked at whether or not you could actually physically remove a section of the the quarry face, but that was going to be prohibitively expensive as well. So, I, I mean, I can only say that we've been developing this along um, a kind of a linear line, uh, and and we've got the advice that we got from the specialists, and that's bringing out that we need to do something with the local. The local area, with, you know, close to the proposed facility, to address the risk of falling boulders. So that, that's as much as I can I can let you know. Okay, thanks, Eddie. Okay, no. Hey, okay. Thank you for that. Okay, we'll move on to shared services if that's okay, Gail. Thank you, convener. Um, members will recall that um, officers brought to the last committee a proposal for an interim management structure for roads and ground services for a period of three months. Um, the proposal in this report is to progress with an interim strategic um, grounds management model for a period of a further year. So that would take us to May 22. It's solely a management proposal for ground services, not road services, as it's proposed that Western Barcher will look to recruit a roads manager in the near future. I'm happy to take questions. Okay. Uh, Gail, I'm sorry, before we go into that, can we maybe just go through the city deal stuff, Stuart? Sorry, we we're going to speak about that. Uh, can we maybe just catch up on that before we kind of move on to Gail's shared services, please? Yeah, thank you, convener. Um, just very briefly, Green Oak Ocean Terminal, the contractor is making a soft start on site today which is a bit of a watershed moment for us all. With regards to Inverkit, uh, Gail and I met with Scottish Power. Um, it's safe to say that the drawings that they have produced or their consultants have produced are initial drawings. They're not detailed drawings. They're certainly not 3D drawings. Uh, what we want to do is establish what procurement route we can follow in respect of getting on with the project. And we're, we've got Scottish Power looking to see what contractual obligations they have with their existing consultant, um, because it would be safe to say, and I'm conscious we're not in private, but there are no members of the public present, um, we're pretty disappointed with the quality of the drawings that we've seen to date. Um, and with regards to Inch Green, the outline business case was submitted in due course, um, and I've got a presentation with the City Deal PMO to go through the, pres the, the, the outline business case on Friday of this week. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Okay, we're okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when are we get any questions for Gail on shared services without asking Gail to get through that again. Any questions, Graham? Yeah, thanks for that. Just obviously on the, the joint services board, um or committee, whatever it's called. Um it's, it's kind of a confusion for me, all the different changes. I'm just confident that Gail's got this in hand or Stuart's got this in hand. Um, because we're we're cutting posts, joining posts. So I just wonder if 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 officers are confident that the light the, the road we've gone down, excuse the button, the road we've gone down with joint services, um, is it coming to a, a, a positive outcome or are we actually going to hit the buffers? Um, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Convener. Um, I, I would agree that progress has been slower than we would have planned due to the pandemic. So this year has held it up in some ways, but also in relation to getting agreement in what and how we progress with sharing of posts, um, where there has been benefits um, has been in. Um, lessons learned, uh, working together, sharing of knowledge, um, and that particularly has been strong during 
the difficult pandemic period in the development of risk assessments, you know, to going to procure um, solutions and things like that. So there are a number of benefits that are difficult to quantify, and I believe that it would be useful for us to bring forward uh, elected members briefing to go through some of those benefits that the team have um, sort of experienced, particularly through the last year, but in the year um, previously as well. That would be very helpful, Kiwi. I look forward to the briefing. Okay, thanks for that, Neil. Okay, can we move on to residual waste, which is Gail again? Thank you, convener. This is um, a request for approval to go to tender for our residual waste collection solution. Um, we come to an end with our current provider in August of this year. So it's proposed that we go to tender in May with a view to being able to award contract um, to recommence with a new um, tender in August 21. Be a four year um, tender period but with the opportunity to extend to the end of December 2025, if required to align with the landfill ban. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. I don't see any questions in the chat. Are we okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, here's where we hit the buffers when we start talking about parking. Uh, item num <laughs> number eight. Uh, Martin, are you taking us with us? I'll take this one through you, convener. Um, Really, it's a proposal to recommence the enforcement of on-street uh, time-limited parking restrictions from a month, effectively a month um, from yesterday on this Monday, the 7th of June, following a publicity campaign and also following, I think, further uh, notification to permit holders. We have recently had some updated figures on the uptake of permit holders or the renewal rates for permit holders. There's still a wee bit of work to be done on that, so we need to get some more publicity out before we start anything. Uh, the second part is the suspension of the pay and display chargers in council car parks. Now, this, for, this forms a, a proposal that will be going to the May Policy and Resources Committee uh, if it's approved by the Members' Budget Working Group to actually fund the suspension of pay and display parking, uh, the lost income through the, the COVID recovery fund. Um, therefore, if the committee approves the suspension to um, the 31st of March, then the decision on that will obviously have to be remitted to the Policy and Resources Committee on the 25th of May. Happy to take any questions. Okay, thanks very much for that. Martin, I see a question from Graham. Why the 7th of June, 2021? Very yes. simply, very simply, just to give the opportunity for sufficient time to get the message out to people um, that we are recommencing as we've run into slight buffers before when we've we have not had sufficient publicity in advance. So four weeks time seemed a reasonable time scale to do this following committee approval. If I may, convener, OK, so, so why not August? Are, are we are we having a problem? With the churn is not happening in the town centre, are, are, are we identifying our police Scotland having to move vehicles because of illegal parking? Why do we have to reintroduce this? I'm not against it. I just why when we're introducing the parking when the town centre certainly is not buzzing. Martin, for you, convener. Um, essentially, when this when this recommendation was written, the intention had. We'd been approaching the reopening of a number of sectors on the 26th, including non essential retail. And it was felt that we keep an eye on it, but it was felt that that was a reasonable time scale. Okay, you know, I'm happy with that, but you know, we've kept an eye on it. We have the statistics, we have the uh, more than just a gut feeling, I'm assuming. Convena, we we know that we need to start reinforcing parking regulations. That's why potentially we're going to put a sixty pound ticket on your windscreen. So through you, convener, I should possibly also add that we will have the at the later in June the potential with um, the Scottish government recommendation on more people returning to offices. So that will also have a an impact. So we need to be have that in mind and. Really, um, Councillor Brooks is correct. We don't we don't really know, and it may remain quiet um, for some time yet. But 
Um, what we don't want to be doing is try reacting when there's you know parking builds up. So uh, uh, we have to pick a date essentially. Okay, man. Thanks, hey, Ronnie. Do you want to come in? Yeah, thanks, Michael. Uh, Martin, um, with regard to the recommencing uh, the enforcement of residence permit restrictions, which is in the papers here, would that include the potential rollout of parking permits in Lower Kempock Street? I would have to defer on that one to Gail, I think, as that's a, that's a kind of parking policy issue. However, at this stage, we will be dealing with what we have at this stage, and that's really the parking permits that we have at the moment are entirely in central Greenock. So I think that would be to follow. Gail, can you comment on that one, please? Yeah, um, thank you, convener. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, that would be to follow, and it would follow in line with when the new um, car park charging comes in, which we do not have a date for at this time. So we would give an update on that when we are more aware of plans. Okay, thanks, Gail. Would there be any kind of indicative uh, planning that we can have a look at prior to it being implemented? Yeah, thanks, convener. Uh, convener, as you know, it's been remitted to myself and officers to look at car parking across Inverclyde. Um, that thorny subject. Um, we have had a number of meetings, and it's certainly our intention. Uh, we've got some ideas, uh, and what we intend to do is to use the summer to have further engagement with members to seek their views on it before. Uh, bringing a report after the summer recess back to members with a view to hopefully having a comprehensive car parking strategy across the whole of Inverclyde. Okay, thanks, Joe. Okay, when you want to come in? Yeah, just just a quick question on the parking. Obviously, we've we'll, we've had COVID. We've we've had a parking strategy based on people with space to working. So are we planning to review that? Obviously, post COVID, we might see our office working reduced um, because more people are working from home and deciding that that's the way the future is. I know we've got some large companies who have already decided into next year that fifty percent of their staff will be working from home. So are we kind of going to build something into the parking strategy to to you know we don't need all these restrictions if we only potentially have fifty percent of people looking to park during the day? Yeah. Yes, um, as to was advising, um, part of that working group that are looking at the parking restrictions is looking at recovery and what does, well, we, we don't know what it'll look like, but trying to look at the signs and the evidence that we're seeing and what that post COVID um, situation could look like. Yeah. Okay, one. Yeah. Okay, Chris. <clears throat> Thanks, Ken. I was just on. Obviously, we're taking a soft and softy approach, relatively speaking, when it comes to this, because we're leaving the council car parks three at this point in time post June. Uh, so I'm just wondering, are we going, are, are we going to be reviewing this uh, as we go along? Because obviously, we, if we get that, if we're able to get the town centres back to some semblance of normality, then we will need to what they call consider uh, incorporating putting back in the pay and display parking as well. So I'm just wondering how quickly we. Uh, how 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 good an eye we're going to be keeping on on the the use of the of the off street car parking as, as we progress through to March twenty twenty two. Yeah. Kill. Convener, if you don't mind, can I take that? Um, yes, sure. Yeah. The, the the scenario that we find ourselves in is that obviously the 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 town centres have been very quiet during COVID, but as people as more and more people have been coming back to work. Um, they, they are certainly noticeably getting busier. The purpose of our report today is to address uh, that so that we're on our front foot, but we also recognise that there has to be a comprehensive review. Um, so from our perspective, yes, we will keep an eye on what's happening with the pay and display car parks, because recognising it's the pay and display car parks where the income comes from. But um, it's, as I alluded to in my previous question, it's our intention to be engaging with members over the summer recess with a view to bringing a report back, looking at all of the town centre, all of car parking within Inverclyde early in the, 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 in the autumn. 
Okay, Chris, okay with that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just want to make sure that we obviously at the moment we're seeing having the free car parks as a benefit to town centres. We want to make sure we don't get the situation where it's actually becomes a detriment again and we're not actually getting people into town centres because there's a lot of uh, blocking up parking spaces, etc. Uh, that's fine, I'm happy with that. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, if we can move on to supplementary guidance, Stuart. Convener, uh, supplementary guidance forms the, the, the almost the backbone behind the local development plan. Um, what we're doing is we have produced a series of supplementary guidance documents which relate to uh, affordable housing in the villages, enabling development, energy, planning advice notes and priority places. So these are working documents, Convener, and it's an intention that these will be out for public consultation with the proposed plan commencing on the 14th of May, subject to committee approval. Okay, thanks, Stuart. No questions on that? No? Okay, we've got about eight minutes left here, so we're doing no, not too bad. So listen, at this point, Stuart, we're agreeing recommendations and, and then going on to the property section in private, yeah. So I'd be quite happy to agree the recommendations uh, that we've covered so far. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, thanks everybody. Okay, the, the, the last item is to be held in private, but I don't think we've got any members of the public here and it's property issues and it's